Hey guys, we come to you live from the business end of the range. We're <laughs> currently being shot at by some weird FUD hunter types, I guess. I'm not sure what's going on. But if one of us keels over randomly, you'll know why. That or the alcohol poisoning. Yep. Right. Hey, so um, I've uh, bullied Hop to come out to Utah once again. And a, a project that really almost led to this, this trip the, the, this concept, we're calling it the USPR or the Urban DMR, and it's the idea that we can, you know, chop off some of our barrel length to get a much more handy, uh, perhaps even more capable package with the addition of different accessories. Obviously, with the, the downside being we lose some of our barrel length, we lose some of our velocity. And this has been an interesting project because I think this one was more so done for personal personal reasons like we, we wanted a rifle like this more so than like really trying to you know make a video or push a trend out of this now of course we are soulless youtubers so i i made a video out of a video out of it which is probably going to be released by the time you see this video but this is more of the behind the scenes how each rifle ended up in this point because despite the fact that um we might have a lot of really cool rifle builds uh there's a lot of experimentation that it takes to get to the, this point yeah. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna take me on your journey? How you ended up with a turbo pistol light strapped to the end of your rifle? Yeah. This was okay. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> that part just sort of happened. I feel like I'm the victim there. Like that happened to me. Yeah. I didn't do that. Surefire did that. Yeah. Too. That was like that was inflicted upon me by somebody else. Uh, yeah. So this the base configuration of this rifle has not changed. It's a 16 inch stainless BA uh, fluted 2 to 3 wild barrel. Uh, and I've had this configured in a whole bunch of different ways, different rails and stuff like that, different optics. Um, but yes, I, I wanted to, to rebuild my SPR sometime after we did our SPR shoot. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great, very functional rifle. So of course you had yeah, to take so it apart. Yeah, so I got home and I took it apart because that's how you do it. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll just go with a six. Like, I just I just wanted to try it. I was like, I just want to try 16 inch precision barrel. Like what, why not? So 16 inch mid gas gun. I called it the, the hop mod or the, or the, uh, the Mark 12 mod hop. A joke after the, the Mod Holland, which was the one of the uh, versions of the actual like Mark 12 SPR, which Ooh, is a 16 inch so barrel. It might have been that they wanted, uh, or somebody you know involved in the program, Holland, whoever he was, uh, he yeah he really wanted a 16 inch barrel, so that's just one of those variants. And yeah, I've I've had different different optics, different rails on there. Um, in yeah, its current configuration, it's sort of an excuse to use a rare discontinued Larue Slickatinny rail. That you immediately marked up on the rocks. Yeah, then I. Jesus, I beat it up. You can't get these anymore. They're probably worth like a million dollars each, but uh, I'm not going to be super nice to it. But it's it's just interesting because you got the you know you got the three six and nine little pick rail sections, and so that's I was like, well, a pistol light would attach really nicely to that, and the new Surefire X300 Turbo has way more candela than most of my rifle lights. Yeah, so yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's, and it's a base weapon chicken. light, so I've been told. Um, and also, the other thing I love is that the long gun kit has an actual like hard kill switch on and, it. And that, that switch looks really cool, too. It looks like something you'd, you'd remove, like a glass covering, like missiles armed, like right before you roll yeah, into it. Yeah, it's just fun to actuate. Anyway, so I can do the thing that I like to do where I turn my light off at night, uh, even though this isn't <laughs> set up for night vision, so whatever. Uh, but then I broke it. No longer stays latched. Despite the name, Rifle kit. This is not actually for rifles. It's broken. Yeah. What? What? Uh. What optic did you? What, I, I know this had an original configuration. I think you even have a video on your main YouTube channel about yeah, that. What was the optic that you were stuff. running at first? At some point, I had a, a Vortex PSD Gen 2, 2 to 10 by 32. Never was, mind. I know why you got rid of that. Yeah. But for the audience, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. That's like phenomenal glass quality in a scope that usually only costs like 800 bucks uh, and it's just a delight to get your eyeballs behind it so you know if this is a comfy rifle that's a comfy scope but that's ah, just such a pain in the ass the turrets never stay where you put them and the thing weighs like 28 29 ounces or something like that for just a for two, two to, to ten. ten yeah fuck. um and so yeah I mean, okay so remember for for you uh for you like og fans out there remember that we had our, our spr talk and I was like, man, I want more magnification. And you kind of talked me off the ledge. So when I was replacing that two to 10, I was thinking, yeah, more magnification. And I more. remembered what would Brock say? He would say, don't do that. And yeah, as, as so often the case, if I do the opposite of my instincts, things turn out a lot better. So inspired by your, you know, short range urban SPR or, you know, short range precision thing, I, I put the uh, Voodoo one to 10 on there. Cause I was like, kind of curious, like what, 
what can I do with a, a fixed focus one to 10? You know, it doesn't have the best glass quality from eight to 10. I don't think most one to tens do, but it's otherwise, I mean, it's, it's configured pretty well. It's dialable. It's got uh, capped windage locking. Sometimes I think I was a little too harsh in my review of the Voodoo one to 10, because like the glass quality at the, the eight and down really got to be one of the best on the market. Of course, I mean, it's a brand new scope made by you know, a, a decent company that's, uh, this is like, this This is technically a Gen 2 when you think about it, or the 1X is actually quite serviceable. I talk about how good the 2X is on here, but this 2X will never compare to any 1X, no matter how fish -y and warpy the 1X is on this thing. So it's got a good benefit. The turrets are great, right? They lock, mm -hmm. they're easy to use. Um, reticles are okay. There's, I mean, there's, the, the there's reticles could use work, but I got the MOA one because I'm an American, goddammit. I am European. Yeah. So it, actually, it's not a terrible scope. And when we like lose the pretense, right? Because really it is, it is a pretense. Even on an SPR, the notion of engaging out to 600 yards, it's an awesome capability. Will that ever happen? It's an awesome capability. But when we, use, when, we, when we say like, hey, we don't really care about that almost at all anymore. We want precision 500, 400 and in, or even 300 and in. Well, then that LPVO starts to make a lot of sense. Yeah. You're essentially talking about like a really low percentage shot like you're only 200 yards away but you're trying to shoot at like an elbow poking out of a you know like an armored personnel carrier or some shit and whatever this fantasy scenario is so being able to dial precisely so you can get a nice hold you're not like guesstimating you're not using a course bdc that only goes every hundred meters or whatever like you know you got our little dope charts and and you dial exactly to that distance so you, you in conjunction sure. with the rangefinder yeah you're gonna have to range find it so i thought about replacing this barrel with a 14.5 to make it shorter and cooler because i got a little bit of little, little. i got envious of how short your gun is uh, is that a thing i don't know it's like the opposite of the way yeah i've never envy, heard this as an Asian is works. there a yeah. fucking bug back here but yeah no this barrel i know this barrel's fucking accurate so you got like i kind of want to keep like a it. sub moa like a really sub moa with that right yeah okay. I've, I've had some groups with that aac ammo which is also great affordable ammo for us so far which is uh, yeah like half minute five shot groups uh so i'm just gonna keep this barrel i'll mm -hmm. see if i can ever you need a longer rail see though. if i can shoot it out i don't know i don't like the i don't like that long rail but look at all this look, look at this look at this this is unsightly it's like an exposed ankle like you can't be having that this is utah yeah. we're reasonable here well but it's it okay should, i mean you you had fun first. shooting so you're gonna tear this thing apart as soon as you get home anyway well if people stop making fun of my short rail it is kind of short dude yeah all right uh i don't want to like it's like negotiating with terrorists right yeah like as soon as you admit that your rail is in fact short. Yeah, I don't want to contribute to this, like this society's perception that a rail has to be 15 inches long, okay? I, I mean, have you seen this rail? It's pretty good looking. It's a good looking rail, it's a good looking rail. It's a damn good looking rail. So what the fuck is that? <laughs> this is not working. Everything is not working. Jesus Christ. Happened. Okay, so this is- We're outside, Brock. Yeah, eh, this is my USBR. Um, uh, maybe I'll roll in some footage, maybe I won't. You'll never know. I started off with a test demo type because I was uh, testing a gun. Uh, I never ended up reviewing it because that was not like part of the thing. It's just testing a gun. It was a 14.5 uh, chrome-lined barrel from Radical. And not Radical Firearms, Radical Defense. Yeah, different different. Very different company. Yeah. Radical <laughs> Firearms is not, not a company you should buy a rifle from. Radical Defense, I don't know. Yeah. Rifle, no rifle did alright. It was it was very under gassed. Uh, they, they've since fixed that, but I was running it suppressed universally, so it was one of the softest shooting guns known to mankind because it it, it was very under gassed. Uh, started that one out more so due to a review thing, but also some some curiosity with a three to eighteen X on it, where it's like I'm gonna magnify the shit out of what I was shooting at, and it was it was good. Like no one ever complained about magnification when you're taking the shot, right? But you complain about it every single second leading up to it. Uh, it's it's a heavy bitch. That optic, with all the accoutrements on it, that optic alone was 40.5 ounces. That's the GLX. The GLX, yeah. So you put the red dot on it. You put the you put all the stuff on it, and yeah, 40 ounces. Combine that with a mid. Uh, uh, it was like a Gov profile barrel. Put the Sandman S on it. That was a heavy rifle. That was not enjoyable. That thing is light. That. Like, I think I picked that up for the first time and I immediately just wanted to build that, so. Yeah, so nice. that, that was the first iteration. That That's more of a YouTube 
curiosity, right? Where you pick up whatever you're reviewing at a time and clobber it together on a rifle and it happened to line up with the idea of the, the Urban SPR. Shorter barrel, the Alawa suppressor and other things. This is kind of what I wanted to build, however. So for the barrel, I did the, um, I wanted something lighter, but actually still more capable of sustaining um, uh, long courses of fire. So I took my longer, thicker barrel that I had on my 18 inch gun, not, not you know, an H bar, but definitely a thicker barrel. And this is the Geisley um, Cold Hammer Forge barrel. So it's a, a mid profile on the, on the smaller end, generally speaking. It's, it's not a heavy barrel for what you're getting. And yeah, I did give up the, the precision barrel I had on my 18 inch gun, right? This isn't technically a precision barrel uh, because it's Cold Hammer Forge. Lee knows what they're doing, yeah. yeah. So they can make a Cold Hammer Forge chrome line barrel that doesn't have the traditional downsides. But then again, I mean, barrel, barrels are getting so good they're now. So good, I'm not yeah. totally sure if that's like, like Cold Hammer Forge chrome line used to not be accurate. That was the, that was the, the theory. Yeah. And then guys, he's like, now ours is a super accurate. And you're like, yeah, but kind of all barrels seem to be accurate. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So I think this is just more of a function of the, the, the rising, the rising Bill Geisley raises all barrel accuracy. Rising military expenditures raises the quality of all military industrial contractors. I wouldn't really call this a precision barrel anymore, but I'm getting about one MOA, which is good enough for, um, you know, it's, it's not inaccurate. That's accurate as hell by any other standards um, for my, you know, SPR style rifle, especially within the ranges we're expecting to use this at. Ditch the three to 18, cause it's one of those, it's, it's the, it's the optic superposition. 3X is basically 2.5X and 2.5X, you know, some places round that down to 2X. That was, yeah, the, the theory we had with this two to 10, I think that a lot of people were, were kind of saying when it came out because it was so expensive and because they stuck with the same tube design, it ends up being a little on the heavy side for a two to 10. Yeah, 24 uh, more than five ounces. for loophole, because loophole is known for making lightweight scopes. Mm -hmm. So that thing's barely lighter than the three to 18 and it's expensive. And it's like, well, well, why don't I, because three is basically two, but it's not a three to 18. It's yeah. a 3.6 to 18. And this two. So it's more like four versus two. Yeah. And now you're getting pretty far away from it. And the two on that is- The two on that is, is the, the reticle fucking, it's God damn it, Leopold. I think due to the LPVO style design, the two to 10 by 30, which is funny because the tube side is significantly larger than the, uh, the thing, which is not common at all for these styles of scope. But you end up with an incredibly flat 2X, which ends up meaning this 2X can be used in a lot of scenarios that you would analog, anal, anal, analog, anal, fuck. You would use a 1X LPVO in. So I'm very happy about that because I'm the type that uses the centerline optic as much as I can. I don't use this 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 Leopold up here almost ever. It's for night vision usage. Speaking of which, I shaved off a shitload of weight by removing four inches of barrel and removing, you know, a heavier profile to go to a lower profile. I've saved like a pound and a half. And it's a pound and a half on the end of the gun. So my logic is I can put night vision bullshit on here. I can put a suppressor on here. So suppressor rise, I put the 556K from who <laughs> all that works. Sorry, well, uh, mm, sorry, Huxworks. Huxworks Safety Co. They make high-vis vests and suppressors. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a great, it's a, it's a great can to go from the Salmon S. The Salmon S is heavy, very high back pressure. This is not very high back pressure. This is not very heavy. So it ends up being a good fit. The taper mount is, is an added bonus because I don't lose as much accuracy as I do, I think with the dead air. The dead air doesn't always mount back exactly perfectly. It's not so bad that you're losing your POI, but you are probably growing your group size by, you know, maybe a, a fourth of an inch, a third of an inch, whatever. Not something you'd say about all the YHM can mounting systems. Hi, focus drip. <laughs> I was weird in treating you, buddy. <laughs> but I also saved all that weight and that makes me not feel this bipod nearly as much. And it allows me, honestly, I'm considering putting a D, the DIRV night vision device on here. I have the great. I have the weight budget. Um, I'm just kind of experimenting. So this is a surefire vampire light. Don't do as a, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, and I'm gonna- do as Brock says, not as Hop does. There you go. I don't really wanna run this isn't a great night vision setup. It's very much a tertiary or a backup option where I put out IR signature with this and then pass it aim through here. It works, it keeps the weight so nice, but it's not that effective really. All right, time for the Leopold shot. Car, 10X magnification. That, oh, sling. Uh, this is a uh, bee's sling. I don't know. I just bought it. I, I'm, I'm a flatline fiber co simp. Uh, this is basically a flatline fiber co with a thicker, thicker padded section. Uh, 
um, just trying it out. Yeah, I put my, my T-Rex arm sling on here and I was using the uh, the steel QD because I like I like a steel reinforced QD. I think that's a, that's a great, you know, it's a great uh, durable way to mount a sling. It's just in the wrong spot. I would really like to have it up there, just more comfortable to carry the rifle. Um, but I've used like three or four of those Picatinny uh, attached sling mounty things, either like offset QDs or like little loops. And they're all I hate big. all of them. Yeah, they're terrible and they sit way too far off the rail. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of like, I think I even said this in my, in my hot mod videos, like if I really wanted this to be a more practical different, rifle, different. I would do a lot of stuff to it. Th uh, maybe turn I'm it into this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would just steal that. Uh, actually, I forgot. Um, 100, con 100 concepts, concepts, fuck, uh, anti-reflection so, device. Yeah, scope cap. So this one's really nice they because... They have the light cap, the scope cap, and then if you buy one of their logo ball, you get a ball hats, it's called like the head cap or something like that. <laughs> so this one's Those really nice awesome. because, um, you know, ARDs are great, but this has a really low magnification end, 2X, so you can actually still see the grid pattern, and you may not always want to see the grid pattern. And because we have such a small objective lens, on the high end, when we were shooting, it was a really dark day, mm -hmm. and this has a pretty poopy eye box, you notice the lack of light coming in. So, yep. due to a uh, intricate system called bungees, you are able to just simply move this out of the way. Yeah, some of the shooting that we were doing, um, I, was, I was backing it off to like six, so that I could get enough light to see the target. It was a, it was a very overcast rainy yeah. day. It's like the, the usual thing is you back it off to six to find the target. Uh, I knew where the target was, I just couldn't see it clearly because there was just very little contrast. So I was backing it off to sort of remind myself of exactly where the final position of the target was and then I was going up to eight or 10 to actually take the shot. Wow. How, how are you liking that 24 mil or 30 mil tube? Great. Uh. I think our targets just decided to leave without us. He grew legs and left. Yeah, that's probably the weak point like of, of that whole setup and mm -hmm. why I, I, I was considering a one to 10 XLB because like I said, I like my optic to be my optic and not some attached red dot sight. So I was heavily considering this optic, but ultimately, yeah, overcast days in Utah are like half the year. So I was like, you know what? I want a little, yeah, the first Sunday in a while. I wish. God damn. But I want a little more. I, I get about three mils of exit pupil. You get, was it 2.8? Yep. So that little bit does seem to matter. Okay, so how was, how was the shooting with that thing? How did it, because I, I, interestingly enough, we shot the side by side with a 308, you know, platform of all things mm -hmm. at intermediate ranges, we'd call that uh, 400 on, uh, 450 on the top end, uh, 200 on the low end, give or take. Yep. Uh, how, how, did, how did it do for you? So I think we, I think we both did better with these than with our 308s. But then we thought about it for a second. We're like, oh wait a second, those 308s both have like low mag. Yeah, I had, I had a one to eight X on there, and I had the the Viper one to six, and that's got a not precise reticle, and I uh, had a a pretty chadly 50 yard zero going on. That was Ugh. for some reason just do, didn't seem to help when shooting to 450. Oh, I don't know why that was. Uh, but yeah, we were doing better with these. I was making way better hits, but I've also got a full dope chart. I was shooting 77 grain match ammunition. And it was windy too. Yeah, it, was, it was cutting through the wind pretty wasn't, well. Yeah, the wind wasn't troubling us. So, yeah, these were so much easier to shoot. <laughs> yeah, easier uh, to find positions too. I think that was the that was ultimately the biggest thing. I, I, I Because when I was in a good position, that 308 was like cheating, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, you can just center punch it. It, it did not care about the wind. Uh, but this is these are so much like more especially this one is so much more handy you got the bipod you can create such a more such a stable position that 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 impacts your ability to make consistent hits far more uh, i would say yeah I, I had this i had the same thing the 77 grains you just aim slightly left edge of plate or something like that and you're you're good to go at least at those ranges uh if there's a strong crosswind we had about five to ten mile an hour and i think that the velocity wise the loss from 18 to 16 16 to 14 5 you know, shooting out to the ranges that we were using the uh, the longer SPRs at previously would still be totally doable. Mm -hmm. I would start to suffer from my optic choice yeah. at that point. Because and then it's also worth considering, and most people don't think about this, when seven, you use 77 grains, you're not really losing an incredible amount of velocity for dropping in barrels. It's just a heavier projectile. Uh, the round doesn't care as much about the velocity drop nearly as much. But we're also allowed to finally put a suppressor on here. You can put a suppressor on an 18-inch, but it's... It's miserable. I talk about my video or not. No need to rehash it here. But this can, of all cans, actually adds about 30 to 50 FPS on top of the round. And I switched from Norma's. So the end result is this rifle ended up with the exact same FPS as my 18-inch gun with. 
weird. So I, I'm losing almost no practical performance. Obviously, if I put the AAC in the other gun, I would notice some, but it, it's kind of interesting in that regard. Yep, and yeah, we uh, we did a little bit of running and gunning with these as well, and it's not bad. Yeah, it's works. like I mean, they end up they're weight wise and balance and handling and everything. everything they feel a tray. lot like uh, like any of the other GPRs we'd set up. Like I think that probably weighs about as much as my uh, my 16 inch GPR with the ACOG because that's got light and laser and yeah. I mean, some anger, people would even argue barrel. this is a GPR. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that is. It's kind of a bastard child thing. I do like this though. Start like it quite a bit. This. I think uh, I think that about that, that about wraps it up. Wraps it up. I have no idea where this video is going. It's probably going to be on Subscribe Store, but I'll link to it in my USPR Concepts video. So if you enjoyed this video, consider um, not just you know doing the YouTube usual YouTube shit, but if you like this 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 kind of talk format, we do a we do a shitload of these. Most of them are probably not nearly as sober, well produced, or coherent. I mean, we weren't that coherent here today, but even less coherent. Uh, but they do exist, so that's a thing. So if you want to fund Hop tearing apart this rifle for the 28th time, well, uh, consider uh, hitting up the subscribe star and doing some money. Yeah. Boobs. Hey, guys. All right, wrap it. Bye, guys. Oh, shit, we were on this thing too long. <laughs>